Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Sendaidukai and in this episode I show you the scene controls and routings, the oscillators, filters and mixer that forms the core of the sound creating in Search XT. I hope you have a comfortable seat because this will be a long ride. These modules are so connected to each other they need to be explained together. It would be great if you would leave me a like and a subscription. Then let's get started. Let's start with the oscillators. Best description of an oscillator in a manual. This is where the sound is born. As in the previous video explained, each of the A and B scenes have three oscillators. Two ring mod oscillators and one noise oscillator. But let's get started with the three oscillators on the left side. On the top you see the numbers of the three oscillators as switch buttons. For each oscillator you can choose between 12 different oscillator algorithms. Below there's a visual representation of the wave cycle. If you select a wave table or a window oscillator, you can switch the visual between a 2D and a 3D representation by clicking on it. Below is a line with the name of the cycle written on it. Left and right are arrows to navigate between the cycles step by step. If you click on the name itself, you get a menu with all cycles that are installed. You can select another wavetable or window or choose a function like refreshing, import or export cycles, rename or jump to the manual website. Under the wave cycle, there is the key tracking to switch on or off the tracking of the pitch of the nodes. Right of it, there is the key trigger that sets the start position of the phase to zero when pressed or otherwise chooses a random start. Below the key track, there is the octave setting for this oscillator with a range from minus 3 to plus 3 and on its right side there is the oscillator type selection menu. As I mentioned before, Search XT has 12 different oscillator types. Sawtooth and Square in classic version with different settings and in a modern version together with triangle and sign. The settings for every oscillator are shown below the selection and they change every time you select another oscillator accordingly. I highly recommend when trying different oscillators to visit the oscillator chapter in the documentation on the website that you can reach when you click on the question mark in the oscillator type menu. Keep in mind with right clicking your mouse button on nearly all sliders, faders, knobs or background of Search XT you get additional information, settings, or the direct jump to the according documentation chapter. Or you can enter some values or rename something. Or assign to MIDI CC, MIDI Learn, or Clear MIDI Learn. There are already a lot of settings you see directly on the GUI of Search XT, but there are far more options at your fingertips or, let me say, your right mouse button click. So with the classic and the modern oscillator types, you have some different settings and some common settings like hard sync, in most cases um, unison and unison detuning for more voices. Again, use the right mouse click in a lot of cases you can for example extend the sliders range or add a modulation from and so on. A little hint, try the modern triangle oscillator. Right click on the triangle slider and read carefully the menu. Maybe you want to click on the question mark to read more about that because that option can be very helpful. Next in the column, wavetable and window oscillators are slightly similar. Most of you will probably know what a wavetable is. It's a set of wave cycles put together in a table in a file that you can scroll through or morph or whatever algorithm your synthesizer will offer you. The window oscillator is a different approach on wavetable synthesis. It uses another waveform that is multiplied to the wavetable. Search XT offers here nine different wave types that can be multiplied with a wavetable. Then there is another sine oscillator with some more sine variants and additional options to shape or select a shaped sine wave. 
Have a closer look to the sliders and the documentation. Next oscillator type are FM2 and FM3. I'm quoting the documentation with a perfect and also humorous description. FM2 provides a miniature FM synthesizer voice in an oscillator that is specifically tailored towards making nice and musical FM sounds. A single sign carrier is modulated by two sign modulators. As a contrast to FM2, FM3 is the algorithm of choice for scraping paint off the walls. The modulators have a larger range, the ratios can be non-integer, and there's a third modulator which has its rate set to an absolute frequency. With the oscillator routing in the middle top area of the scene and controls, you can select between different oscillator modulation algorithms or none. So if oscillator 1 is modulated by oscillator 2 or 3 in a row, keep in mind that you can select any oscillator type in your three oscillators, not just sine oscillators. The signal flow shows that after the modulation algorithm comes then the noise oscillator on top of it. Under the signal flow there is an FM depth slider like a modulation amount slider. Then there is the string oscillator with a physical modeling approach of string instruments. If you need some more real excitement for instruments that should sound like instruments with the string, you definitely should have a look at this oscillator. By the way, you can use the scroll wheel of your mouse for switching the oscillator types and you can use the scroll wheel as well for the sliders. Used together with the shift key, you can fine tune your selection or slow down. The twist oscillator is an import of an Eurorack module. It implements 16 more oscillator types and settings. You can read more about it on the documentation page where as well the original Eurorack documentation is linked. The documentation point out that this oscillator can be very CPU demanding, so be aware of that. If you are still awake, then you noticed that the documentation of Search XT lied to you when talking about 12 oscillator types. In real life you get much more, they just tricked you in that beautiful sounding rabbit hole. The alias oscillator has this wonderful description. The alias oscillator purposefully ignores a few decades of research into making digital signals with a low or no aliasing and does all the things you shouldn't do. So purposefully sound digital, gross, broken, terrible, yet awesome all at once. So if you need really dirty and broken sounds, this is your playground. And in the alias oscillator is also an additive synthesis as shape available, where you can compose a sound in the wave cycle window with up to 16 harmonics. But that's not the end of the alias, there's even more. The next oscillator is sample and hold noise, with some great settings to control the sample and hold noise and it even has a unison feature, so you can detune the voice noise, if that is even possible. There then comes the audio input as an oscillator source that you can use with external audio or routing audio output from scene A to scene B. I know I should stop now with this episode, because there was so much information in a short amount of time and I only scratched the surface of the possibilities by pointing on Search XT's oscillators, saying Look, my friend, sliders. But since there is this magical mouse right click with a mysterious question mark everywhere pointing to the online manual, I think we can continue with the mixer and the scene settings. The scene setting on the right side of the oscillator setting is the place where you define the range of your pitch bend wheel down and up by pressing down the mouse button and moving the mouse up or down, or right click and edit the value. The play mode right beside lets you define if your patch is polyphonic, so you can play as many notes at the same time that you set up in the poly field of the header section. With the right mouse click, you get an additional setting called same key voice allocation that handles the situation when the same key is pressed again, even though it is still hold down. It can happen with two keyboards or press sustain pedal. Or you define it as monophonic, so only one note at a time. For monophonic there are four modes. 
simple monophonic with no strings or horns attached, monophonic ST, single trigger which doesn't restart the envelope when two notes following each other are overlapping, so like a paraphonic envelope. Then monophonic FP, fingered portamento. The portamento sliding is only applied when two notes are played overlapping or legato. And the fourth mode is the combination of monophonic single trigger and fingered portamento. With all monophonic settings, there's an important setting when you're using the right mouse button. The note priority with last, high, low and legacy note priority, the envelope retrigger behavior and the sustain pedal in monophonic mode. And finally, the latch mode that is monophonic mode too and just holds the last played note. The oscillator drift slider adds an amount of instable pitch to the scene sound like an analog synthesizer and you can set the pitch instability as an initial value or letting it slowly getting instable while the note is played. With the noise color you can choose from left to right from pink noise with more low frequency to white noise with more high frequency. The right mouse button menu let you choose between mono or stereo. Below the noise color setting there is the scene pitch octave setting where you can transpose the whole scene from minus three octaves to plus three octaves. And directly under it there is another pitch setting sometimes called fine tune where you can pitch seven semitones up or down. You know it already with the right mouse click you can extend that range to 84 semitones. Then we glide down to the portamento. Sorry, needed that play on words after hours of preparing the script. But um, put yours in the comments to give your brain a break. So, portamento. This slider sets the amount of time how slow or fast one note glides to the next note pressed. And you guessed it, that's not all what you can do. Just do the right thing with your mouse. Sorry. Okay, there are some right mouse button click settings. The constant rate, if activated, defines the time according to a whole octave. Means, if you hold two notes in a distance of two octaves, the glide needs twice the time as if you would hold two notes in the distance of one octave. A glissando, that is a quantized glide to the steps of your scale, like stairs or if you would play all, for example, half steps from the first to the second note. The retrigger at scale degree means that the envelope FEG and AEG will be retriggered after each quantized step. So it's a glissando with an envelope retrigger, and that is, by the way, sometimes a very nice effect. And finally, there are curve options. The glide curve is by default linear, but can be set to logarithmic, concave, or exponential, convex curve. And now to a section that I think has the less settings on the right mouse button, the mixer. It starts with a line of six M's and another line of six S's. These are to mute and solo the six oscillators. In the next line you find six triple orange boxes filled with a vertical banana that you can move to the middle, left or right. If you move the banana around, it may sound like panning, but this triple orange box banana selector defines to which filter this oscillator is sent. In the middle position to both filters, so filter 1 and filter 2, in the left position only to filter 1 and in the right position only to filter 2. This filter selector is connected to the filter configuration on the upper right where you can choose different filter routings. If this description was too banana for you, please leave me a comment in the comment section. If you already wonder why there are always six options for six oscillators and now it grew to seven sliders when there are only three oscillators, the solution stands under the sliders itself from the left to the right. 
The first three sliders are the oscillators. The next two sliders are ring mod combination of oscillator 1 and 2 and oscillator 2 and 3. The sixth, sixth slider, what a word, is the noise oscillator. You remember the pink white stereo mono noise oscillator. And the last slider is a gain for boosting or attenuating the whole signal before it flows into the filter section. Search XT comes with two filter modules, a filter balance, a filter offset option, a filter routing configuration with feedback, and the possibility to route with the mixer section each oscillator through both filters or filter 1 or filter 2. Then there is key tracking for each filter and filter EG with a filter EG modulation, a mount slider and additional high pass filter and a wave shaper. Let's go step by step. Looking at filter 1, there is a selection menu with a big number of different filters. Low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, multi and effect filter menus. In these menus there are more, let me say, filter models. These are filters modeled after some famous filters like Quark's letter filter, the K35, the OBX or the famous diode letter filter from the Roland TB303. You get more detailed information about the different filters, let's say it together now, when you right click the mouse and jump to the documentation page. When you select a filter model, a nice little icon is shown on the left side of the selection box and on the right side you see a number, mostly a 1. This is definitely the time to press again the right mouse button to see the options. In most cases there are different slopes or other settings like driven or clean. Below are the filter cutoff and the filter resonance sliders for setting up the filter to your taste. When you fiddle with the cutoff filter, you see in the tooltip the frequency and the pitch as note. And with the right click you can reset the filter to the key track root. The key track root setting is below the filter 1 resonance slider on the left side. Directly on the right side there is the filter balance where you can choose which filter output gets the higher or lower volume level. Directly above this slider there is a very small icon like a low pass filter with a high resonance. If you click on it, an additional window opens where you see a visual representation of the filter and where you can choose between the two filters and setting them up via mouse. Filter 2 is nearly the same, but it has two additional options on the right side. The little plus, if activated, the cutoff slider acts as an offset slider to filter 1. And below it, the chain icon that links the resonance filter from filter 1 with the resonance filter of filter 2. The filter configuration diagram on top of the scene and routing area shows and let you select different routings. You select a different routing by pressing one of the buttons below the illustration or right click, then you see serial 1, 2, 3, two dual, one stereo, a ring and a white routing. This is very important in addition to the mixer filter routing options. You remember the triple orange box with a banana. Below the buttons of the filter configuration there is the feedback amount control. The symbols of the filter routing are as well easy to understand. F1 and F2 are the filters 1 and 2. Then there is an icon like a flat S like sound. This is the wave shaper that is located between the key tracking or high pass and the filter envelope generator. The triangle with the A is the amplifier or the AEG ADSR located in the bottom right of scene and routing. And the icon with the high pass is the high pass filter that is located between the key tracking and the wave shaper. Right click on it, for example, and choose a different slope or disable it. And at least there is FB, the feedback where you can feed back the signal to thicken up or thin out the final signal. Using the filter configuration can have a big influence on the timbre of your sound. So always have this part as well in mind when changing a sound, a preset or creating a new sound. Are you still with me? Euler, Euler, Euler.
Now we head over to the key trackings of filter 1 and filter 2, below the filter 1. In the little box above the sliders you can change the root key of your filter tracking. With the sliders you select the amount of the filter tracking that fits to your filter movement. On the right side, the high pass filter, right click and select a slope that works for you and adjust the slider or disable it. Next on the right side is the Wave Shaper. There are currently 43 shapes available that you can see sorted in categories and selected by right-clicking the module, using the left and right arrows below the modules or using the mouse wheel up and down. On the left side there's a Wave Shaper Drive Slider. <laughs> to control the amount of the wave shaping effect, this slider has an interplay with the Mixer Gain Slider. That's the most right slider of the mixer's sliders. If you click on the little flat S icon above the wave shaper, a window will open and you see a visual representation what the current shape is doing with your signal. Move the wave shaper drive slider to see how your signal is shaped. Now we come to the filter envelope generator. Standard ADSR sliders where you can set every single slider to tempo sync with your DAW or all sliders at once with the right mouse button click and then choose your node value. On the right side there are two bipolar filter modulation amount sliders for each filter, filter 1 and filter 2, to control the filter movement. Above the sliders is a pictogram of the ADSR with three vertical lines that you can move around. As soon as you move a vertical line, you see the ADSR pictogram changes the curves. Here you can change the attack decay and release curvature to a different shape. This is because on the right side the digital envelope mode is selected. If you select analog, SearchXC will emulate an analog envelope behavior. The same applies to the AMP envelope generator on the right side. The two sliders on the further right side are Velocity when set to the top, so um, to 0 dB. There's no velocity sensitivity. Pulled further down you get more velocity sensitive at your fingertips. And finally the Bipolar Gain slider for adjusting the level before it gets to the output section on top right of the scenes and routing section, where we will end this while right for this video. So. The output is the output control of the scene and the routing setting to the effect section. The volume slider sets the volume and with the right mouse button click you can configure a hard clipping to zero, to plus 18 dp full scale and to none. The bipolar pan and the width sliders are setting the panning and the width of the patch. But the width slider is only available in stereo and white filter configuration on the left side. The next two sliders below are labeled by default Send FX1 and FX2 level and are connected to the FX section on the right side, the horizontal lane between the A and B lanes. If you select the first two squares you see this default labeling. If you select the third or fourth square, the label in the output section will change to send FX3 and FX4 level. So my friends, this has not been the end. It can be the beginning of a beautiful friendship for you and Search XT, and maybe for the following videos as well. And for all of you that are still alive in front of the screens, my name is Odo Sendai Dukai, thanks for watching and paying attention. And if you have any further questions or feedback or you've noticed anything unusual, let me know in the comments. I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care, see you then, ciao ciao!